Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, this um, quick Zoom chat. Um, I want to introduce myself. My name is Justin Holmes. I run marketing and public policy at Zipcar, and I could not be more thrilled to welcome Dr. Susan Shaheen here with us today. Um, we are going to chat um, a little bit about Earth Month and Earth Day. We've been celebrating here at Zipcar for the last several weeks, and uh, we are super excited to talk to you about the impact of car sharing. Um, and we're hopeful. Uh, that this is a great opportunity for our members and our partners um, just to learn more about the impact of car sharing. Um, if you don't already know, you can check out more background at zipcar.com slash impact. Without further ado, I want to introduce uh, my special guest here, Dr. Susan Shaheen, who is a pioneer in future mobility strategies. She was among the first to observe, research, and write about the changing uh, dynamics in shared mobility. She is an internationally renowned expert in mobility and the sharing economy and a professor in residence uh, of civil and environmental engineering at UC Berkeley. She co-directs the Transportation Sustainability Research Center of the Institute of Transportation Studies at Berkeley. Um, Dr. Shaheen is a true pioneer of car sharing research and I am so honored to have her join us today uh, in celebration of Earth Month to talk about the impact of car sharing. Susan, as always, it is such a pleasure to speak with you. It's great to see you, Justin. I miss hanging out with you in person. Likewise. Um, I have a few quick questions for you just to, to keep the discussion um, moving. First is, you know, how, you know, given everything that's happened um, over the last um, year or so, people have enjoyed outdoor dining spaces more, parklets, slow streets. Um, I think people are experiencing city living and city space in a different way. How, as we move into you know, the next year or more, how do we continue to help people understand that fewer cars in a city is actually good for them? It helps give more clean air, more green spaces and other benefits. How do we encourage more people to give up their cars um, and, and their parking spots? Well, so I'm gonna give you kind of a, a retrospective answer. So I, th I think it's a lot of the same things that we did in the past, Justin. I think the research is really powerful and impactful. The research that I saw from Europe over two decades ago got me hooked on studying this concept. And the numbers just tend to be pretty stunning. A lot of people who get exposed to round trip car sharing in particular, they, they embrace it. And they often embrace it as an alternative to private vehicle ownership. And the reason for that is that they can be more multimodal. They have a lot more choices. They can get rid of the fixed costs of auto ownership and the hassles associated with it and switch to variable costs. And then they can make better decisions about how they spend their transportation dollars matched to the right trip, per, you know, for the right trip purpose, the right mode. And so that is sort of the behavioral uh, secret sauce of car sharing is basically turning those fixed costs to variable costs. And so people often in our research talk about, yes, this makes me feel good because of the environmental benefits, but we hear a lot about, I don't have the hassles of taking care of a car, searching for parking, and I can save money. Our research demonstrates that households save on average per month anywhere between $150 to $435 per month. So those cost savings are really important. The other thing besides great research, providing choice and demonstrating empirically what those benefits are to people, I think you're right. We're seeing new uses of the curb. We're seeing parklets, we're seeing outdoor dining on the curb. And I think that demonstrably shows people what it could be like to be in a city that isn't dominated by cars but is actually all about people. And as you know, car sharing takes vehicles off the road. The study that I know you cite that we co-authored many years ago demonstrates that one car sharing vehicle, one round trip car sharing vehicle takes nine to 13 vehicles off the road. That's impressive. And you know, certainly we hear that from our members every day. Um, you mentioned, um, you know, we were talking a little bit about COVID and obviously the pandemic has impacted mobility behaviors in, in a lot of different ways. Are there particular trends uh, that you're watching that might impact shared mobility or 
you know, different questions that are being asked and surveys that you think will come out with new data in the next, um, you know, six to 12 months that will help us understand um, some of these more recent mobility trends a bit better? Yeah, COVID really hit us last year and caused a lot of significant change in transportation. We saw massive declines in vehicle miles traveled globally from car use. We saw, unfortunately, similar levels of reduction in public transit ridership and concerns about virus transmission. But what we also saw was growth in some other areas. We've seen active transportation modes really getting so much press because people are out trying to get their hands on bikes and electric mm. bikes. We've seen cities correspondingly respond with slow street movements and providing a lot more rights of way access for these slower modes of transportation. And I think those of us that are really interested in sustainable transportation know that when we slow transportation down, we make it more equitable, more efficient for all and more environmentally sound. Areas where we also saw upticks were e-commerce, lots of changes there because a lot of people couldn't get to stores or were concerned about getting to stores. And the other big wild card is work from home. How is that going to play out as we get more vaccinated and people go back? Because a lot of people move to different locations, some permanently, some temporarily. We don't know entirely how employers are going to respond to this. So I think there's a lot of wild cards still out there and a lot of uncertainty. There's still variants of the virus. But I think in terms of coming back, shared mobility, particularly modes like car sharing, what we saw was that they immediately responded with cleaning protocols, new ways of keeping people safe. And we saw a big uptick in, in some models of car sharing uh, as people recovered or we moved through the recovery phases. And I think Zipcar was among one of the beneficiaries of people really wanting to access your vehicles once they were feeling a bit safer. Yeah, I think that's certainly right. Um, you know, we, I think you're 100% right that we're still operating in an environment of some uncertainty. And, you know, we've been fortunate as a company and as a brand to, to try to adjust as quickly as we can to help our members navigate through what has been an incredibly challenging year um, for most of us. Um, I do want to end on uh, maybe more of a, of a high note. Obviously, we've been celebrating Earth Month for the last several weeks now. And you know, we've talked a little bit about the impacts of um, car sharing and uh, multimodalism on the future of our cities. So I'd, I'd love to ask you a little bit more about your vision for the future of car sharing. What gives you hope in the next year? If we were to sit here and have the same conversation, um, you know, in Earth Month of 2022, what, what do you hope will have happened um, in the last year that we've done differently to make, you know, our cities and our environments uh, a bit better? That's such a great question. I love talking about hope um, because it has been a challenging, challenging year. I am very hopeful that we're getting the pandemic under control. A lot more people are getting vaccinated and there's signs of a strong economic recovery. Mm. And we're talking about infusing the transportation infrastructure with a whole lot of money uh, through the American jobs plan. So a year from now could look drastically different. The other thing I am super hopeful about, Justin, is that one of the things that did come out of the pandemic was a focus more on essential workers, mm. on, on low income populations, providing more environmental equity, mobility justice. And one of the things I've always thought was amazing about car sharing and other forms of shared mobility was the ability for people to gain access to a car when they needed it, but mm. not having to rely on it every day and then have this very expensive asset sitting unused 95% or more of the time and taking up critical infrastructure like our parking spaces. So I'm really hopeful that we can all work together more and more to spread shared mobility to more of our population and more of our critical and essential workers and low income populations. I'm also really hopeful that we're, we're gonna take on climate change 
And we're hearing a lot more about that in terms of building back better. And so, you know, what role can car sharing play in providing transportation alternatives to private vehicle ownership and use and reliance if we are going to try to decarbonize? And car sharing has demonstrated notable reductions in terms of vehicle miles traveled reductions of anywhere between 27 to 43 percent and greenhouse gas reductions of about 34 to 41 percent. So I think car sharing can also play a role in decarbonization alongside environmental equity. Well, that's an incredibly hopeful note um, and we um, uh, very much appreciate you taking some time to be with us. So um, please join me. Thank you to those of you that are viewing today. Thank you, especially to Dr. Shaheen for spending some of her very valuable time um, with us today to honor Earth Month and the impact of car sharing. Um, thanks to all of our members uh, and our community partners who continue to make such a tremendously positive um, impact um, in their communities. Um, and as I mentioned when we began, feel free to learn more um, at zipcar.com slash impact. Susan, thank you. Pleasure to spend some time with you and happy Earth Month to you all. Thank you.